In the Red Kitchen, Tony's team needs to plan a Caribbean menu featuring a red snapper appetizer and a beef tenderloin entree. Andre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking we're going to do a, a fried fish, so it's an Escobese yes. fish. Yes. I'm the team captain, but I have to rely on Andre's expertise and knowledge. We can probably do ackee with fried dumpling. Yum. Ackee is the national dish of Jamaica, and it's super traditional. I know everyone loves it. Go team blue, come on. Okay, okay, okay. Scope everything out. In the blue kitchen, Chanel's team needs to create a crab and shrimp appetizer and a chicken entree. What do you think about a, a crab and shrimp croquette with spicy salsa? Ooh, I was thinking salsa for the main. Spicy chicken with the fruit salsa? Yes, exactly. There are zero people on our team who know Caribbean food. We should make soup. It's the easiest thing to make and to actually hold over and keep warm. It's going to be the best way to get all of those Caribbean flavors in kind of one little bowl. So I'm like, you got it, bro. <laughs> Team Blue! One, two, three, yeah, baby! Let's go! You guys got everything? Yep. There is no pressure quite like cooking for a wedding. Caribbean cuisine is some of the most exciting cuisine in the world. So many big, bold, bright flavors. Such as jerk seasoning, sweetness of mangoes and papaya and Scotch bonnets. Scotch bonnets. Tony, the captain of the red team, is a soccer coach. So he's a born leader. Is there anything you want me to help you with here? No. OK, you call me, you tell me. Yes, sir. Right at go, they got four pans going. It's like an assembly line right there. We're working really well together. Andre is in charge of the hacky. Chrissy is getting the slot ready. Jenny is putting together the mango salsa. Alyssa is filleting the fish. This is one portion. You know, yeah. cut about 140, 150. Yeah, then if spare. we need them, then we use them. If we don't yeah. need them, we don't use them. Tony has experience on his hands. Chanel's never led a team before, never led a kitchen. So it is the inexperience that I think is going to be their big weak link. OK, I'll start oh, soup. We're making a cassava and coconut soup. I'm trusting Regine almost entirely with the soup. Colin is doing the shrimp. He's, he's the seafood guy. Jennifer's working on croutons. Here, these aren't toasted yet, but that's the butter. Salt. So, okay. And Josh, for three hours, he is just going to do chicken for this entree round. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Uh, my role in the first course is is nothing, really. You know, right off the hop, Chanel assigned me to do jerk chicken. Kind of worried about the jerk marinade. The one time I did make it, I shamelessly used a dry rub I bought from the store. Wow. <laughs> How many Scotch bonnets do you have in here? I have a lot in there. I got 15 in there. But... I want you to do something for me. Yeah. I want you to just rub this with your finger, just a little bit. <laughs> I want you to just, just tap it on your tongue. My tongue is on fire. This is just craziness that a pepper could be that hot. And ask yourself a question. Are these going to put someone in the hospital or not? For sure. Because these are very hot. Here. Andre. Yes, Chef. I, mean, I tell you, I love Aki. OK, yeah. because it's almost similar like, to a uh, to uh, lychee. Yeah. Did you know that ackee is poisonous? Yes, you I did. Know that. Yes, so, I did. Uh, you're not if gonna... you pick it too young, yes. it's poisonous. All right. Ripe ackee is good. So nobody's gonna get hurt. Nobody's gonna get hurt today. Yeah. The seasoning, the salt, and all that is good. I think the heat wise, give it a you little know, more. You gotta be a little bit more aggressive. Okay. 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 Because hey, it's gotta feel Caribbean. Okay. Okay. Josh, is the jerk done? Yeah, I'm just. It's got some heat mm. to it, right? Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, it's got some heat. Yeah. It's good. The jerk sauce is on point. Jerk. It starts out spicy, but subtle, and then it ends like the back of your palate with this good, like, kick of heat. That's really good. That's so good. Josh, all right. 10 minutes, 10 minutes, guys. In a stressful situation, I find myself being a little bit. I don't know why I'm yelling. Unsettled. Rishi, hey. put it at the end, and then okay. you're the last one. OK, well, I'm just saying it. I know, I need you to move okay. so I can do it. Chrissy. Everybody, we need to stop yelling. Just talk to each other, guys. Don't get upset. Just do it. Tell me what you need. Guys. Those aren't done. Those don't, not, those don't have the seeds on it. Oh, Andre, just shut up, please. No, help out okay. with the sauce. Shut the hell up. Don't talk like that to each other, please. I don't even know who this Tony is. This is not my Tony macaroni. Everybody now is, a, is an expert. There's people yelling. There's people swearing. It's just, like, chaotic. Where is the sauce? Right here, right here. Tony, I'm just in the zone trying Chrissy, to hurry. That's Chrissy. all, okay? Of course not. You and me, we don't fight. No we're good, we're good. I know my personality. I want the people around me who are calm, <laughs> they are cool, and they do their work. It's not easy being team captain. Keep your head up. I know, so I picked a good team. Yeah, baby. The guests will now sample each team's appetizer. The red team's red snapper escovich with ackee and jicama slaw. 
or the Blue Team's coconut cassava soup with spicy shrimp and crab. Hi there, newlyweds. Hi. I've come in to see what you think of these two appetizers being served. I really like the Red Team's ackee and Red Snapper. That, to me, it just tasted like my grandma's cooking on a Sunday. I thought that was pretty authentic in terms of the taste. Uh, the plating was very nice as well. As you can see, I practically finished it already. I'm still working on the soup from the Blues team, but I just wish there was a little bit more of a punch, a little bit more spice. Fantastic. Thank you both. Hi, ladies. Hello. What do you think of the blue appetizer? I loved it. Mm -hmm. I found it a little bland. Quite I'm not going to lie. You got the red appetizers. The ackee is very, very explosive when you eat it. It's really, really good. The red dish is uh, very flavorful. Fish was very delicate. Uh, I really liked the blue plate. It was savory. I would go with the blue dish. Back in the kitchen, the home cooks are rushing to get their final plates out. Quick, guys, quick, quick, quick. But the blue team has hit a snag. That's not good. I'm out of soup. How many do we need? About 20. Are you serious? We are out of soup. I don't know if I can stretch the soup. Start pour, making more. Pour it back in there and just extend it. Get coconut milk, I'll figure it out. We have no choice. We take the leftover soup, add coconut milk, shrimp stock, and that's it. Here you go, done. This is it, these three yeah, here? Yeah, that's it? Yeah. Yeah, we did it. All right. OK, uh, there's exactly quick, enough. Help, quick, yeah, quick, I know, quick, go on. yeah, please. Here you are. Thank you. Thank you. It's cold. The red plate was better, much better. With the appetizers all served, both teams are now scrambling to make up for lost time on their entrees. Guys, we have one hour to pump this out. We got to get on it. Get that meat cooking, guys. So far, we haven't really had time to think about the second course because we've been just working hard to get the first one out. White potatoes to thicken, right? I don't think we have white. Dice up some sweet potatoes. Again, we're following Andre's input. I'm doing the dumplings right now. So we're making stewed beef and dumpling, but we're way behind. Alyssa's just starting to cut this tenderloin, and I'm just starting to get the flour needed for these dumplings. Stew it up, Tony. Hey, you guys, focus. Who's on chicken? I'm on chicken. Okay. I got it. Our entree is a jerk chicken with beans and salsa. I need you to start prepping dragon fruit and pineapple for the salsa. OK. After like the stressful end to the appetizer service, we need to work quicker, and we need to make sure we have enough. OK, 15, right? I really just wanted one person to own the chicken, and Josh is awesome. He's right? kind of just like head down, doing his thing. Oh, I'm so happy I have Josh on my team. The on... chicken is in there. Okay. It is in there. Can you start Watch taking? Those? Can you start grilling some? I am on the chicken. Don't worry about the chicken. <laughs> it's my only job is to cook this chicken. All I keep thinking is don't ruin this lovely bride's wedding. Oh, Josh. Oh, sh Josh just dropped an entire tray of chicken. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Oh, Josh. It's OK, bud. It's OK. Do we have extra chicken? Uh, there are extra chickens. I'm panicking. I'm like, do we have enough chicken? Can we count? I mean, one night, two night, three night, four night, five night, six. I'm not, I'm, I count, uh, Josh, I only counted 115. OK, so I got those ones right there. 115, 16, so we should be good. 17, 18, 19, 21, Colin, 22. how many? 122 if my count's right. That's the exact amount. I know. Oh my god, you guys, we have the exact amount. The blue team, they still got to grill all those chickens, make sure they're cooked, and there's only salsa to do 30 portions. We still got a lot to go. 30 minutes! You only have 30 minutes left! There are also problems in the other kitchen where the red team is struggling with their beef stew. Andre, it has no flavor at all, none whatsoever. Black pepper, salt, onion powder, get those in. I know my team wants me to be at five places at one time, but I can't right now. I mean, nobody else can do the dumplings. Do what you got to do, man. We, we Honestly, we just got to pump out things now. Jenny, yeah? can you season this for me? I toss an onion, garlic, every spice I can find. And I say, please, God. <laughs> Cook this stew and make it taste good. The red team, they got three people around the pot I, and one person making the dumpling. That is not good time management. Let me grab some salt, OK? Yeah. You only have 10 more minutes left. 10 minutes. Service will be coming to pick up. We're not going to get this done. Keep going. Josh, what are you doing right now? Just making more jerk sauce. we got to move a little faster. I'm getting very worried. I think both teams right now are starting to slip. This is someone's wedding night. Without our help, they will never get there. All right, Tony, get a cover, get a cover, get a cover on that. It's tasting better, Tony. Tasting better, yeah? It's great. OK, I want you to take some vegetables. Beautiful banana peppers here. 
Chef Claudio comes up next to me and he's like a samurai with a sword, chopping all these vegetables. Have you counted the chicken? Yes, Chef. Make sure every single piece is the same, all right? Yes, for sure, Chef. Okay, here you go, Chef. Here you go, Chef. Let's go. Thank you very much. It's a dream come true to be working with these guys. You know what I mean? They're great chefs. It's exhilarating. All right, who's faster at chopping pineapple? Oh. The answer is me. <laughs> Chef Michael's boosting morale. We're on a high. Yes. All right, come on. The service is coming. Quick, come, come on. on. Let's play. Finish strong. Thank you. Is there any stew that is ready? Yes, there's stew. OK, the plates are going out. We have a stew that I can't believe we made in 40 minutes. And it's not the prettiest, but it still tastes great. For the entree, the red team's dish is a Jamaican beef stew with boiled dumpling and coleslaw. The blue team is serving jerk chicken with beans and greens. did not enjoy my first bite of the red plate. It's missing a lot of flavor. And the blue plate, the chicken was cooked perfectly. It was nice okay. and moist. I'm really digging the jerk seasoning as well. What I like the most about the red dish is I found the beef kind of tender. It was soft, I like that. What I liked in the red plate was the dumpling. It was very good, almost like granny. <laughs> I think the blue team had a best main course. For me, it's literally right here. The winner! is Wow! Yeah, baby! <laughs> what a relief. I, I can't freaking believe it. I want to cry right now. I mean, we won. Oh my god! <laughs> yes! I don't understand how we pulled this off, but I'm sure glad we did. Go, go, go! Yeah, man! Go, go! Yeah, go! Guys, let's take two minutes and just look at everything and get inspired. The one thing that I always think about as kids is simple. I think the biggest challenge cooking for kids is just figuring out what they might like to eat. My favorite when I was a kid was always Pizza Friday. And if they yeah. came out with like weird little square pizzas with like square pepperonis, I would have been like, oh. I'm thinking about cutting squares out of the pepperoni just to be like kind of meta cute. It's like such a simple thing, but yeah. Uh, we have pasta. A good team leader is just someone that listens. You can do macaroni and cheese with a Parmesan breadcrumb. I think mac and cheese is a great idea because you could feed the masses with it. If we can like win them over with gigantic <laughs> brownies. Like a whipped cream sprinkles on top. Like a big I would sundae. guess that zero kids dislike brownies. This is not evidence-based research, but in my estimation, zero. I think a pudding's a good idea, and if we can get an avocado in there, they're also getting nutrition. Exactly. I know for a fact Jenny has a million things going through her head because she's a mom, and she knows what the kids would like. If we have a dip, the veggies should be raw. I'm glad to have her on my team. One, two, two three, cook! Pizza Friday! This is going to be an intense challenge. 161 kids to feed right now. This is not going to be easy. Yeah, that's perfect. Good. Perfect, she said. Mom approves. You know, I think it's really interesting that both team captains picked a fellow home cook that have kids. Because having kids just opens the door to a whole lot of knowledge. I think you should start on dough, and I should do this. The one thing about kids, they never lie if they don't like it. Big guy on the pizza dough. I think the most time-consuming thing is getting the, the dough and the sauce right. Just because, I mean, it's the foundation of pizza, and you don't want to mess that up. Our team is going to work in, like, parallel duos. We've got Chanel and Josh on the pizza and sauce, and me and Alyssa on the brownie. Once each duo gets our, like, main task squared away, we're going to reconvene to talk about the vegetables. I just want to make sure this is melted all the way through. Making a brownie as well as the pizza is a bit risky, just because we only have so many ovens and we only have so much time but I just want to make it extra awesome and fun and delicious for them. We need four cups in each of ours. OK. Jennifer is doing amazing as a leader. Everything's super organized. Everybody knows exactly what they're doing. Check this out. Double fisting. Woo! Yeah. We're just having a blast. 
I think we have the perfect team right now. Yeah. I, I cannot believe this. Today we are making mac and cheese with ground beef, followed by vegetables with ranch dipping sauce, and then chocolate pudding to finish it all off. So we got Rogine doing the main, which is the mac and cheese. Me and Jenny are starting the dessert. And then we have Chrissy over there working on the ranch dip for the vegetables. Everyone's good, everyone's calm. Yeah. Let's just have fun. Andre's not an in-your-face type of leader. His approach is to just trust his teammates. You know, we're all here, we all can cook. I'm making the beef. Uh, we're gonna do uh, ground beef macaroni and cheese. I make macaroni and cheese all the time, so it's second nature for me. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Wow, uh, what a workout. I am worried because time management, it's an issue with Regine. Look at you go with your ground beef. Regine does things his way, always. <laughs> and when it's a team setting, you're only as strong as your weakest teammate. You didn't even start the cheese, man. It's 10 pounds of ground beef, OK? But don't worry. Kids love chocolate. Plan for the oven is get the brownies in post haste. And 25 minutes later, get them out, get those pizzas right in there immediately. Woo! Pizza time. My kids do like pizza, very simple kind of pizzas and flavors. On the red team, I'm the only one that has kids. Just knowing what we go through every day trying to feed our kids, I think I bring that knowledge. We have to make uh, 11, 12 sheets of pizza. But we're cooking for 161 kids. Like, that's a crazy amount of people. How many doughs you got down? One, two, three, four, five, six, six. OK, almost there. I don't know about you guys, but you know, we're all dads. I remember when my son was little, I would try and get him engaged in different flavors and different tastes and textures. Sometimes you have to change the appearance, the shape. You have to make food look really attractive. Absolutely, you know, you have to start kids off at a very young age to create that really adventurous palette. You start them when you're young and you set them up for the future. I'm actually making stars out of the candy cane beets. They're gonna go with the ranch dip that I've made. At this point, I have a lot to prove being picked last doesn't feel good for anybody, but I just have to keep going. I'm gonna kick some ass here, so. <laughs> kick some butt. <laughs> hey, Alyssa, what's up? Grating cheese, Woo! like a boss. I'm in charge of grating a whole bunch of cheese for these pizzas. Ah! I'm just hoping that I can get this done in time, but this bowl is not filling up super fast. Okay, extra pizzas are done. Whatever I can do to help. Get on the cheese. At this point, the dough is all ready to go. The sauce is ready to go. But we don't have enough cheese. So I just start shredding. The Cheese Olympics are on. You got a hard cheese. That's easy, your butt. Are you kidding me? I'll try it. Are you calling me out right now? Yeah, I am. Okay. I've played team sports all my life. What it taught me is be a good team player. It doesn't matter what you can contribute. You can contribute something. Ooh. Ooh. I'm here to be a competitor and a contender. I'm here to win. Can't let that Newfoundlander beat me over there with the hard cheese. I'm not a Newfoundlander. You Saskatchewanian. 60 minutes. You only have 60 minutes left. Come on. You better be ready in 60 minutes. Woo, we're getting there. Rogine, you're making the mac and cheese, right? Yes, chef. You know you have under an hour, right? I think mac and cheese can come together really quickly, so. How many portions do you think you have right here? These are probably like 10, so only 30 here, chef. So you have 30 portions. Yep. You have 161 kids. So, uh, so how long did these take to cook? Uh, About 20 minutes. You actually don't have enough time. We are not in a good place. This is the worst feeling I've had the entire competition. If I were you, I would get water on here ASAP. OK. Because oh. you will run out of time, I can guarantee okay. it. Let's if go. you only use these burners. Yep. Let's go. There's no time. I need to pop out Regine. Pour it in. If we mess up this mac and cheese, we're completely screwed. Let's go, let's go. It's time to really put it into gear. <sighs> Come on. I, uh, this cheese is taking a lot longer than I thought. It's craziness going on in here. I'm definitely worried that we're running behind. It just seems like we're grating cheese for like a half an hour to an hour. OK, good. And we definitely have to get back on track and get these pizzas in the oven. This pizza seems to be so labor intensive, grating all that cheese, cutting the pepperoni into squares. So time consuming. I'm thinking that uh, cutting squares out of literally all of these lunch meats is going to be way too time ambitious. We originally wanted square pepperonis, but it's going to take too much time. Guys, we're going to go straight up Windsor style diced pepperoni. Windsor, Ontario has some of the best pizza in the world, which is shredded pepperoni on top of the cheese. Shout out to Windsor. Thanks for saving the day here. Oh, that looks amazing, Jenny. So kids, kids are tricky to cook for. You really have to sneak all the nutrition into their food. They don't want to see vegetables. It all has to be hidden within the proteins. That's how you do it, is it? That's how I do it. 
I am the expert of hiding vegetables in everything. I make a school lunch every day from scratch. My kids never take anything in a box. So today, I'm making a pudding with avocados. <laughs> I don't want to serve these kids junky food because they need the nutrition. Their brains are growing so quickly. And this avocado chocolate pudding I make, not only is it delicious, but it's packed full of nutrition. It's a great way to trick kids into eating a healthy dessert. Wow, that's good. good. Eh? That's really good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 30 minutes! You only have 30 minutes left! We have to just keep up this pace that we've been, we've been going at. The brownies are out. Josh is just, like, killing it on the pizza. Woo. But we still have so much left to do. The red team haven't even started on their veggies yet. You got to go, man. So Chanel and Alyssa get right on the vegetables. I think this thickness, or what do you think? Dude, literally just go. We're just moving as fast as we can at this point. That's, like, spicy. Ooh, those are peppery. We tested the watermelon radish and realized this is way too spicy for our palates. Jen, like, I don't know if this is a good idea. I think we dish this so we know it's not going to work for the kids. I just don't want it to overpower everything else. These are a lost cause. We need to think about plan B. It's your call. Let's hold off on these. Okay. okay. And then do just the cucumber and yep. the cherry tomato okay. and the ranch. We're scrapping these radishes, cherry tomatoes instead. 15 minutes! You only have 15 minutes left! Both teams right now are starting to panic and feel the pressure. I think they're finding out that these grand ideas are costing them valuable time. If we need more cheese, we can add more cheese. That's easy. Yeah. So I want this mac and cheese to be ooey and gooey. I'm really looking for the punchy cheddar flavor, but I'm really worried that beef is a very strong flavor. Do you like it better with or without beef? I like it better without. Without? Oh, yeah. yeah. Jenny. So we're doing a taste test with and without beef. This is beef. Uh, I trust Jenny's palate because she's the mom. Okay, no beef. No, no beef. beef. No, no beef. beef. And they've had to adapt on the fly, which is what you have to do to get it done. Rosine, we might have to scrap the oven part, okay? My macaroni and cheese is not in the oven yet. I love baked mac and cheese, but we just don't have enough time. We need every last drop. I need to make sure I get it all done as soon as possible. Five minutes left! Five minutes left! You better be filling the trays now! In five minutes, 161 hungry kids are entering the room. Woo. Guys, we're going to set up an assembly at the front. Yeah. You have to be mega organized for plating. Once those kids come through the door, it's unrelenting. They're hungry now. Alyssa, you're on veg? Yep. Josh, you got pizza? Yeah, yeah, I got pizza. Chanel, you're on cucumber. Time is of the essence. This is wrong. Brownie's next to the pizza, guys. Oh, this is guys, I need people up here. Come on, come on. Come on, guys. It's a lot of work to plate one plate, let alone 161. And I think that's tripping everyone up. Guys, get the mac and cheese up here. Yeah, we need this mac and cheese on here, guys. Like, now. I have all the plating set up at the front, but our macaroni and cheese is being plated at the very back of the kitchen. Two minutes! You only have two more minutes left! Andre is the most mellow person ever, but right now, I really think we need a leader because we are so unorganized right now, it's ridiculous. There's no carrots in some of these. Oh, my God. One more minute left! You only have one more minute left! Take this, just take it, add more in the oven. For us to pull out this win, we have to get way more organized than what we're doing right now. Come on, guys, let's put it together. Okay, look out, look out, look out, look out, look out, look out. Now we're just running around like chickens with our heads cut off. You know, it's lunchtime, the kids are coming. I kind of hear it getting louder in the hallways coming towards us. It's getting louder and louder. You can hear footsteps and louder footsteps and louder footsteps. Five, four, three, two, one! Ah! When they say it's lunchtime, they mean it. It's just like a mountain of kids. There you go, sweetheart. Wait, who's next? Each one of the school kids will get two plates. The red team's features pepperoni pizza and a brownie dessert. The blue team is serving up mac and cheese with avocado chocolate pudding. We have pizza, you have brownie. You go, enjoy. Do you like extra sprinkles? All right. You guys like mac and cheese? <laughs> yeah. This room is booming. Think we're working fast enough? Yeah? <laughs> this is the cutest thing that's ever happened. These kids are the cutest. The trays are, like, bigger than some of their torsos. The pizza's the size of their face. Best pizza Friday ever. Yeah! My favorite team is red. I love the brownie and the pizza. The mac and cheese is really good, but I 
I didn't like the pudding though. A little bit bitter and I don't really like like it. That's my best friend Parker. You want sprinkles? Yeah! Are you gonna vote for blue team? <laughs> Thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> I need an awesome. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. I can feel my heart racing a million miles a second. Three, two, one! Like, I just feel so grateful to all these little ones. It's so cool. It's so exciting. Congratulations to the red team. As you can see from the scoreboard, your team won in a landslide. 37 votes separate us from the blue team today. It was an amazing feeling to see that. Thanks, guys. OK, we have orders in. Red team, one avocado salad, one clam and chorizo. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. I'm going to have Chanel do the uh, broken avocado salad, and I'm going to do the clams. This is way too hot, way too hot. And then what I'm going to have Jennifer do is go back and forth uh, in helping us. Do, how are we doing for avocados? Do we need more avocados? No, we're good. OK. How are you doing, Josh? Good, good, good. Blue team, one avocado salad, two clams and chorizo. I'm doing the clams and chorizo. Woo! It's something I've eaten often, I've made often. It's a no-brainer. Blood orange, and then we got pumpkin seeds. Andre wants to do the salad. You're doing wicked, Chrissy. Thank you, thank you. Regine is our floater, I guess. Check two clams up. Good job. Table 15, two clams. New order in. Listen up, red team. Four avocado salad, two clams. Two clams, four avocado salad. Make it nice or make it twice. Fine, fine, fine. Yep. Thank you. There's not a lot of room. We're bumping butts all the time. <laughs> That's a switch. Being super organized in this kitchen is paramount. I'm just going to work around you, OK? Yeah. Okay. Order up, chef. Well done, guys. This is looking good. Blue team, order fire. Two broken avocado salad, two clam and chorizo. This is a lot harder than it seems. Blue team, did you hear me? Yes, yes chef. chef. Yes, chef. We're going to have to scrap this batch. They didn't open? Uh, a lot of them didn't, no. No? No. The clams are just not opening fast enough. OK, Chrissy, I need you to push on those clams. OK, yes. Yes, chef. It's feeling really overwhelming that I just can't get them out fast enough. Let's go, let's go. So close. My team is saying, we got clams coming. They're not coming. Chrissy needs to get on it pronto. I need clams. I'm the team captain, and I'm going to sink this team. We, we got like six clams all day. I thought there was just the four. My blood pressure is rising fast. Chrissy, I need this out a little bit faster. Keep it on the heat. Make okay. sure you get enough liquid in there. Thank you. Those clams will open up to you. Let's get that heat up. <laughs> You know clams. You know all of these flavors. You know what you're doing. That's good, and it's hot. All of a sudden, I find my groove, and we are busting out appetizers. Two clams, chef. Nice looking chorizo and clams here, Chrissy. Your rush order is up, Thank chef. Thank you. Here you go. Here you go. Here, plate this. Josh, is there another piece of tentacle for this uh, calamari and chorizo? I need another Dinner squid. Service. Have you got another squid to grab me? Yeah, here you go. Yeah, just right here, right here. Put it in here. Being the team captain is a lot of pressure. I don't have the time to, to stop what I'm doing and turn around just to double check everything. I'm kind of relying on my teammates. Can I get a bit more broth in these clams? They're too dry. Yes, Chef. One it's going to be one more lot. soupy. Hurry it up, because those clams are going to get cold. Yes, Chef. Chef Michael is looking for perfection. The avocado is up in the window, so one clam and chorizo, and your appetizers are done. Woo! Well done, Red yeah. Team. As the home cooks prepare for the entree service, the judges take a moment to taste each team's appetizers. OK, let's tuck into the blue team. Broken avocado salad. A fairly generous portion, maybe a little too heavy on the beans, on the base, in my opinion. In terms of dressing, they've got that formula right. Fresh, crisp, nicely seasoned salad. The red team, I think, did a great job on the presentation. Great control with the seasoning. The seasoning really brings out the avocado. OK, let's take a look at the clams and chorizo on the blue team. Good portion, approximate to what I'd served or shown them. The broth is right at the edge of saltiness. Lovely cook on that clam. The squid on the blue team, for me, hits that sweet spot. It's very tender, 
The red team's clam and chorizo. The red team's broth, it's very spicy. However, the red team did a great job with the calamari. It's perfectly tender, it's well seasoned. Both teams seem to cook the calamari, the clams, really quite nicely. So you got the salmon? Yes. I got the lamb. The appetizer was definitely more like a practice, and the entree is the real thing. Guests will choose between roasted lamb sirloin and Atlantic salmon. Red team. Yes, chef. One Atlantic salmon, one roasted lamb sirloin. Yes, chef. Now I'm going to be cooking the lamb, Chanel plating the dishes. We have to get the sauces going, guys. I have Jennifer cooking the salmon. OK, I think this is almost there. The skin's getting pretty good. I actually haven't cooked a lot of salmon, but I'm about to get to know salmon real well. Listen up, blue team. Three Atlantic salmon, one roasted sirloin. Yes, chef. I'm taking on the salmon. Ah! Guys, I need help. I need Regine on the lamb. That's how he got himself back in the MasterChef kitchen. Good sear on that lamb. Lamb's in. Andre's plates are gorgeous. He did such an amazing job in the appetizer round that, you know what, stick with it. I need the first dish up. I am now starting to get a little concerned. Lamb up, Chef. Here we go. Here we go. That's two blue in the oven. Two blue in the oven. Lambs are not done here. I don't feel like we're kicking off on the right foot. It doesn't feel organized. You guys, these are all blue. These are too rare, like longer in the pan. Blue team, new order in, four lamb. Four lamb, guys. So much lamb. Come on, blue team, I need some plates now. Almost there, chef. There are way more lamb orders coming in than salmon. I'm not just going to stand around waiting for salmon orders. Just got to wipe that. Sorry, that needs cleaning. Sorry, chef. Andre, you're going to keep an eye on these plates to come up clean for me, OK? Yes, yes, chef. All right, chef. service, let's go. First table out. Well done, blue team. You have one lamb, one salmon. Table seven. Come on, red team. You're killing me over here. Salmon and lamb to get your first order out. Order up, chef. Service, pick up. Feels like we're super slow, and then everything else is going 100 miles an hour. Red team, tell me what you got coming up next. Uh, two lamb and two salmon. Thank you so much. While many customers sit waiting for their entrees, one diner has encountered a problem. Michael, I went to one of the tables. Look at that. Look at that. Jennifer, this salmon yes, is sir. way too underdone. Oh, no. I assume each of us is quality checking throughout the cook. Salmon is not, is, is not being cooked properly. This is not, look, you guys, this is not done. Hey, Jennifer, just, that's Dude, you keep pulling me off of this Kay. to do other things? Okay. Josh should be taking the responsibility of captain. Like, yelling at me doesn't make it better, man. Our team is suffering from communication breakdown. Do you need any more salmon? I don't know, guys, I don't know. I'm not the one to ask. A piece of salmon undercooked by me. I just want to fix this as fast as I can. OK, that's better. You got it. Alvin, that's the recook. Sorry, I wasn't trying to let yell at you at all. I hope it's to your satisfaction. Okay. Very well done. Good. Thank you. <laughs> really apologize again. Thank you. Thank you. How long have you been waiting? For the main course, about 45 minutes. 45 minutes. Yeah. Blue team, the two salmon, four lamb. Chef, how many lamb all day? Nine. Nine. I need one right now to go with this salmon. If it's not here in a minute, I'll be sending the salmon back. It is almost impossible to get the timing right on the big tables that have a mix of both the salmon and the lamb. Guys, I need it in two minutes or we have to reset the whole thing. No, it's coming. Red team. Yes. Four lamb, new order, OK? Was that a yes? Yes, chef. Yes, Thank chef. you. Yes, chef. The tickets just never stop. You just feel like you're just constantly trying to dig your way out of this hole, uh, and the only place that you're going is down. In the past, two salmon, followed by two lamb, and one second, chef. I need four lamb to go with these two. Oh. And then it's two lamb, two salmon after oh, that. Oh, you need four lamb, OK. Yes. Do you need another pan for lamb? Uh, yeah. How long on that salmon and that lamb? He needs to cook more lamb, so we're going to be about eight minutes. Eight minutes? That's killing me. Red team. These are words you don't want to hear. You have over a 90-minute wait on one table. It's a 10-year-old girl. I spent a lifetime building this company, not to be destroyed in an afternoon. 90 minutes have gone by? This is a horror of a service. I'm sending my chef de cuisine, Julie, in to help. OK. Blue team, I'm sending Chef Julie to give you a hand so we can get these last few tables out. Yes, Chef. Guys, we got to get these final tables out. Let's go. OK, I'm going to go and jump in the red team, give them a hand. I need you to stay on the okay. path. All right, red team, we got to get this salmon out. I'm not going to let my customers down. You going in the oven with those? Yes, I am, Chef. Yeah, it's a little dark on that one. a little dark. She's here because we suck. <laughs> OK, you need about a minute on these salmon. Do you want to just keep an eye on them? I just turned it down a little okay. bit. OK. Julie's pretty slick, man. She, she knows her stuff. So let's put these plates in the past so they stay warm. Okay. Let's just give a quick wipe down so we're nice and organized. All right, I need three more lambs, guys, and the board's cleared. Woo! One salmon, three lamb up. Table eight. 
Pick up. Table 13. Two salmon, two lamb. You're going to table 14. Service, please. Thank you. Nice looking plates. Red team, you are done. Your last plates are out. Yes. Feels great. At the same time, um, you know, I feel bad. You know, we definitely could have done better. You know, I had 90 minutes behind service. Blue team, you're done. Thank you, chef. Well done. It took too long. But we did it. We actually did it. It was painful at times, but we got it done. And the red team nailed it on the salmon. It's so perfectly cooked and tender. It's wonderful. The red team's lamb is just a little bit overdone. Um, I love the blue team salmon. It's the best ever. It's cooked perfectly. My lamb from the blue team, it's a little overdone for me. But the sauce accompanies it quite nicely. It was a long, hard push for both red team and the blue team. They struggled to stay ahead, to get the food out quick enough. Maybe a lack of communication, too. So let's take a look at the blue team salmon dish. Looks like a nice color on the salmon skin. Looking nice and crispy. So let's cut it open, see what the cook is like. I had asked that it be just a little blushing pink on the inside. This, it is probably just a little on the overside. They're a little bit on the dry side and maybe a little more seasoning as well. Now let's try the red team salmon. The skin is not as crispy. Probably you can see right there. I do find the cook on the salmon of the red team a little closer to the cook that I was looking for. The fish, though, is under seasoned. There's not enough sea salt. All right, let's uh, take a look at the blue place lamb. What I asked the home cooks to do was to cook the lamb between medium and medium well. That was the range, the sweet spot that I'd like them to cook it to. That's what they've given me. The seasoning for the lamb, for me, is just a little bit off, maybe a little bit too much. Try that, Michael. That piece is a little over. Let's take a look at the red team's lamb. The lamb is well seasoned, but it's also well done. I'd say the lamb is a little over. It looks like both teams excelled with the appetizers, but they both struggled with the main courses. Maybe it wasn't enough pre-planning. Maybe it wasn't staying on top of things, but they struggled. Both teams sailed through the appetizer and struggled mightily with the entree. The dishes you sent out had many positive attributes, but because of your lack of speed and organization, Michael and his chef de cuisine, Julie, had to jump in so you could complete the service. With all that in mind, it was a difficult decision for us. We have decided to award the win to... Neither of you. For the first time in MasterChef Canada history, we have decided that neither team deserves the win. Both teams will face the pressure test tonight. This is not a first that I'm excited to be a part of. I'm working on our corn chowder right now, so I'm getting as much corn as I can off here. I am working on a corn fritter that's going to go with our soup. I'm using corn flour, corn meal. It's going to be uh, amazing. In the last challenge, I almost went home. The end is so close. You know, we're down to four cooks now. It's definitely going to be a, a tough game from here on out. 14 minutes. I'm just going to take off enough for the first couple steaks. Yeah. OK? So I'm just kind of trying to set things up for Andre, because I know he's working really hard on getting that cake done. How do you time this thing? I get the cake in the oven and start working on that meat. I have to make sure those steaks are perfectly cooked. And then I have to make a great pan sauce. Oh, beautiful. I've come a long way. Before this, I was working in the hospital, doing my regular routine. And now I'm top four in MasterChef Canada. Being here is making me realize that cooking is where I should be. All right, how are we doing? I'm good. I'm chopping the squash for dessert. Just going to get a head start on it. Christy, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Chef? What are you making? We're going to do a corn chowder, and we're going to have little corn fritters that go with it with a little bit of a maple drizzle. So how are you going to incorporate this beautiful white corn to your corn chowder? It's going to be the main, like, chunky components of the corn in the soup. Have you uh, ever had this corn before? I have not. It has that little note of smoke in it, which is really fascinating. Yeah, it almost tastes like a tortilla. So let me ask you, what is the dynamic like between yourself and Josh? We're just sharing ideas back and forth. We're checking in with each other. I think we both feel really good about what we're doing. You've got a lot to do. I'll leave you to it. Good okay. luck. Thank you, Chef. I'll be the first to admit, I used to underestimate Josh. Give us a taste. Oh, OK, he does the meat and potatoes, whatever. You get a hint of that smoke. You get a lot of corn. But he knows food. He's passionate. And he can cook. That tastes really good. 
Wow, <laughs> smells delicious. Okay, describe your first course. What are you doing? We're doing um, a pemmican-inspired uh, bison and corn. Nice. Have you ever cooked bison before? Never, chef. Okay, feel that. What's that telling you right now? Feel that. Yeah. Feel that. That's well done. What's that? That's rare. That's rare. Okay. So I got to be in the middle. Attention to your food. Okay. Even cut a little piece. Look inside of it. Take a peek and see what's happening. Thank you, chef. Okay. Good luck. How is it? Oh yeah, a little longer. A little longer. Yeah, yeah. There's five minutes left. I got to put it back in the pan and start basting some more. Cutting it really close. Home stretch. Come on. Flip over. There you go. These are taking forever to fry. Uh, cook, cook, cook. With two minutes remaining, both teams must now start plating their first course. Oh, you know what? I have to make that sauce. Be stock and wine? I realized I forgot to start making that sauce. So I throw some stock in and I start reducing it down. This dish is going to be the judge's first impression. It's do or die. I need to make this sauce in under a minute. Dude, I'm just going to start getting uh, some of this down, OK? Yep, go ahead. Okay. Beautiful, Josh. Beautiful, beautiful. So far in this competition, Chrissy and I definitely aren't known as the top platers, but we can cook. There's so much on the line here. It has to be perfect. I think we're gold. Tastes good. OK, I'm going to strain it off, and I'm going to yep. pour it in. Awesome. This is such a huge privilege to cook for luminaries of Indigenous cuisine. I just really hope they like it. Amazing job, Andre. Awesome job. All right, Kay. round one. So what do you have in front of you from the blue team is a corn chowder with smoked cheddar and corn fritter. And from the red team, a pemmican-inspired bison with corn. So please enjoy. I am very, very impressed. These dishes look like they came from a professional kitchen. The red team, the pemmican-inspired corn. I'm a huge fan of Iroquois white corn, and it's front and center. It was incredible. I agree. On the red team, they've really done a good job with the white corn. You really do get the smokiness. Whereas I feel with the blue team's dish, the white corn is featured, but you don't quite get that from this particular dish. Go, go, go. Back in the kitchen, the home cooks are tackling their second course, this time featuring beans. I'm thinking like nice long strips like this will do. So for the second course, we're going to have a wild mushroom dusted venison medallion on a warm bean salad with a wild berry balsamic reduction. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, Josh. We've got runner beans, we've got green beans, yellow wax beans. Let's use them all. I want these beans to be beautiful and mouth-watering. OK, just a couple more of these guys, and then we should be good. All right, so I'm going to grab the partridge. OK, awesome. I'm going to move on to the beans. For our second course, we're doing partridge in a nest of sour cherries and beans. We're hoping this plate tells a story of a partridge, you know, in its little nest. I like having stems on my beans. How do you feel about it? I like them too. Keep it rustic, yeah. Okay, cool. I like them all. The bean is the main star, but the partridge is going to accompany it. I got to get these birds in ASAP. I got to move fast with these partridges because I got to get them roasted. So I do not have time to cut this bird up into little pieces. So I'm just basically chopping it straight down into halves. Ooh, that's a nice sound. This is my first time cooking venison tenderloin. But uh, you know, being from the prairies, who doesn't like cooking meat? So I'm just going to sear them at really high heat just to get a nice crust on them, take them off, and then rub it in a dried mushroom dust. And then I'm going to finish it off in the oven. I'm going to literally uh, treat these beans as though they're like a steak and like butter base them. Oh, yeah, perfect. The treatment we're giving to the beans is to butter baste them to really kind of bring out their more like earthy elements. No, I, I like them whole, man. Yeah, no, I like them too. I love the great outdoors. One of my fondest early food memories is fishing with my dad. He passed away when I was 20. Being here and using all these really special ingredients and just seeing how far I've come, he would have loved this. Josh. Yes, Chef. How's the venison doing? Come on, you got to rest it. I don't want to pull them out until they're exactly perfect. And I know it's not exactly there yet. Just a little underwear on it. Josh. Yeah, I'm coming. Start pleating. OK. 
We are running out of time, but we cannot serve these guests and these judges undercooked venison. It has to be just right. Okay, I'm gonna pull these out in like a minute, okay? It's almost there, so I'm just praying that this works out for me. We gotta start slicing. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to give it as much time as possible to rest, but at this point, I have no more time. We gotta get this meat cut and get it on the plate. It has to go. I gotta, I gotta just okay. do the sauce part. Okay. I got the rest of it. Oh, do they look good? We got this. I've never cooked a partridge before. Oh, I definitely do not want to let my team down. Okay. Thanks very much, you guys. Woo! So the second course from the red team is roasted partridge with sour cherry gastrique and a bean nest. From the blue team, we have venison medallions, three bean salad, and pickled cinnamon cap mushrooms. Let's dig in, shall we? I think on the red team, just feels a little bit more sort of rustic and homey and simple. Counter to that, the blue team, I think there's some elegance to the plating. I like the balance of this dish. You have the bean, still has this crunch. The berries provide the acidity, so one working with the other. Now, the venison, it's slightly overcooked, but still, for me, it's not bad. On the red team, the partridge is delicious, lots of great flavor. The beans, however, you can see that they weren't uh, cleaned properly, which is a problem. For the red team, when I think of indigenous hospitality, indigenous food, it, I think very approachable. This is how we would eat it, right here. But the beans could use a little bit of work. For the beans to be a featured ingredient, I think blue team really did a great job. I had to like cut off the ends of my beans to eat them off of the red team. Thank you for the feedback. Last push, last round. It's all sweet stuff. We got this. So with this third course, we have a squash cake with a tempered chocolate bark on the side. And we're gonna finish it off with some juniper pastry cream. Wait, I already have the cake done, dude. Yep. We start big. Andre has the cake already done. I'm gonna get started on the juniper pastry cream. Like, Andre's gonna start making some chocolate bark. So I'm using a brush so I can get the bark lines onto the chocolate. We're still sticking with the outdoors theme, and I want this chocolate to look like tree bark. This is the third and final course. Everything has to be perfect. We gotta get this cool down quick. Oh, it's so pretty. Baking powder, baking powder. Where's the baking powder? The idea for this third course is to really celebrate the squash. So we're gonna do like, kind of like a play on a bread pudding using bannock. There's nothing better than a hot piece of bannock. Bannock is a quick bread that's very simple to make. You know, it's pretty much flour, baking powder, and water. Ready for this? See how this goes. Bannock is perfectly done when it's nice and golden brown on the outside. Oh, that looks gorgeous, Josh. I'm responsible for squash, squash, and more squash. So squash puree, caramelized butternut squash. Also a whipped cream with some birch syrup, cinnamon, and nutmeg. Yes, that's perfect. I want to eat this. <laughs> I really want to eat this dessert. Oh my god. <laughs> that is so good. Oh, this cake is nice. I'm gonna follow you with the pastry cream, okay? Perfect. I'm mega proud of us. We had such a joy of a time cooking together, and I think that really showed in our food and on the plates. I'm gonna follow you this way, okay? I'd be extremely devastated if we'd lose this one. Okay, so just over top, like that? Perfect. Okay. These are so nice, Josh. Oh, my God. I feel like this challenge has been perfect to show that I can be delicate and, and plate well, and also that, hey, I deserve to be here, and I'm a force to be reckoned with, too. I thought these big hands would be using flowers, right? <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Yes. Good job, guys. Good luck tomorrow on the pressure test, red team. <laughs> Boom, mic drop. I'm out. So let's get on to the third course. From the red team, we have a birch and squash cake with tempered chocolate bark, candied squash, and juniper pastry cream. And from the blue team, a deconstructed bannock bread pudding with a squash mousse and candied squash. Well, let's dig in. What I first of all notice is the plating styles have flipped. The red team has gone with a more sophisticated plating. 
whereas I felt their bean course was much more rustic. On the blue team, plating is much more sort of homey and simple. Visually, these are probably my favorite plates. The blue team's plate, the squash in a puree, you can taste it. Candy squash, also a nice touch. I love the texture from the bannock. I just love the complexity. The red team, at first I thought, gee, the cake might look a little on the dry side, but oh no, it was beautiful and moist. The flavors of this slightly bitterness from the chocolate was just absolutely wonderful. I agree. I like the chocolate with the squash, something I never really thought would go. I'm really liking this. Chef Mandy, what are your comments on the third course? I don't know which one I like better. They did a good job on both of them. You know, you're all our guests today, and I'm very proud. I think that they have really risen to a new level in the kitchen tonight, and you can see it with these two desserts, both extraordinary. Both teams presented strong dishes, but one of the two stood a little bit ahead with their sophisticated plating and by impressing everyone at the table with how well they honored those ingredients. The team that earns a pass to the top three is... the red team. We just put so much care into that meal. I'm just so grateful that they liked what we did. Andre and Jennifer, head up to the gallery. You okay? Thank you. Good job, guys. I feel extremely grateful to make it this far. And we're automatically top three. Oh my gosh.